Hello, everyone. This is Grandmaster Jesse Bowen, and welcome to an empowerment call. Our topic today is about mindset. And this is really important because mindset is the key to all of your success. And today I have with me a special guest, an outstanding martial artist, a new Board of Advisor member for the American Martial Arts Alliance and the Who's Who in the Martial Arts Autobiography book. And he's also a business coach, success coach. And if you've had a chance to go to his website, he has an amazing website, uh, very professional. Uh, you know, really it's an honor to be on a call with him. We've done several things together. We've been bumping into each other, bumping into each other at different events. And this year he was at our event, and it was really good. And what we have come to the conclusion is that the universe may have something that we can contribute to make the world a better place. So we've decided to, why not? Let's have a 30-minute, 20-minute conversation with each other, and maybe there's something that we may say that will empower you. Maybe you're at a place uh, in your life. And this call is not about a martial arts call necessarily. It's about a life call. We are going to integrate different areas that relate back to martial artists because this is one of the primary places that we, from the Who's Who book, uh, that we're actually working from. So we're going to have a connection back to there. But if we have a mom or a dad or anyone listening to our call, we hope there's something you can receive as a takeaway. Sheon Abbott, welcome to our call, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Well, you know, it's really uh, great to be in an environment with people such as yourself and all of the uh, board, new Board of Advisor member and all the guests that we had at the event a few weeks back and the release of the Martial Arts Masters book, and again, you know, thank you and Cynthia and Dan and all of the people that came out for this event uh, because it's really about telling a story. So tell us a little bit so our audience will get a chance to know you. I know your martial arts background and your study in Japan. So let's start there with sort of talking about you, then I'll give a little intro, uh, you know, about myself. That sounds very, very good. Um, with Japan, I spent, you know, a third of my life over there, and I married into the culture over 30 years ago. And, uh, of course, I deal with the Japanese almost on a daily basis. And uh, they have a lot of mindsets that have gone back years and years and years. And that is one of the things that drew me to Tokyo and Japan when I was going to college was the fact that they had deep-set fixed mindsets that were around for millennia basically and that everything was tried and true off of that that's why they do martial arts and economics together because if your mind and body are working together everybody can work smoother and it's all about not individuals it's all about groups over there so if everybody has the same mindset or has the same goal or has the same great idea they can really move mountains and as you see economically japan is is working out well now when i first went over to japan i went over there to play kendo and kendo is a martial art i did a master's degree in that this allowed me to deal with most Japanese that were really, really focused, of course, one thing led into the other. But the most important part about it was is that if I learned the martial arts, the language, the culture, and everything else would just easily fall into place. And, of course, it did, and I, I've done well there. Um, as far as work and everything like that, people are the same around the world. And when you deal with mindsets, everybody has a different mindset. And we have to take those mindsets and think about it a little differently. For example, everybody talks about going global. Going global is really great, but you can't go global with all the different mindsets. So you must have a mindset that everybody looks on to. Here's a good example of a mindset. Say it's noon in Tokyo and we're a little bit hungry 
And I point up, and when I see the golden arches, there's our mindset. We're only deciding on a few things. So if you look at mindsets, and if you talk about mindsets here in the United States or in the Western world, we have to explain it away in a paragraph so we're all on the same page. But for centuries, Japan has been looking at kanji pictorials. So if someone sees the kanji, everybody sees the picture, and they're all on the same plate as a general rule. And then they add their signature to that. So there's a lot of great things that deal with mindset, how to work with mindsets, and how to develop mindsets so everybody is always on the same page, which is very, very important. Because basically a mindset is just a thinking method or a set of assumptions or a thought process. My personal favorite is a goal in progress or what we usually call the great idea. Mm-hmm. You know, and in the corporate world, this is very important. Because in the corporate world, and more so there than than we think about daily, because in the corporate world, we think about the growth mindset and also the fixed mindset. And, you know, this is where I've been blessed with the opportunity uh, starting about six years ago to start uh, coaching for Duke Corporate Education. And Duke CE is rated as one of the number one custom corporate firms in the world and it's given me that opportunity to actually to discover, you know, like companies like Raytheon, American Express, uh, you know, these major companies that are moving, I don't know, like I said, the word global, on a global perspective and how they are now thinking and how they have to have their people thinking in order to become successful. And when we think about the fixed mindset, and I think this is where in the martial arts, I think I'm going to use this as a uh, platform because, you know, this is where we work mostly from, you know, on a daily basis in the martial arts. We can also think about that fixed mindset is that, you know, everything should stay the same. There should be no change. Technology is bad. You know, that's part of a fixed mindset. Fixed mindset say that, okay, this is where, and a growth mindset is a growth mindset is where we adapt and understand the concept of change. You know, our lot, hey, listen, I got a birthday coming up. We all mature. There's never anything that stays the same. So you have to be able to adapt. This call is about growth mindset. This call is here is sharing with individuals that understanding the power to goals and to uh, have them to take a checkpoint to see whether or not they're actually stuck in a place based upon the results that they're getting. Now, if you don't have any goals and you don't have any visions, you're definitely in a fixed mindset. You know, there's no place to go and there's nothing to do. People that have goals, now they become in that what in that uh, growth mindset because there is some place to go, there is something to do, and that we work on doing that. And the mindset it, com- it combines the not only the goal, but it also has to in- combine the vision. So I'm always asked about these two things, and these are two of the things that we use in the martial arts every day. The white belt that comes into your martial arts class, you know. What are their goals? That's the first thing that I want to know. Why are you here? That's the first thing that I ask a brand new student when they come in, they're signing their introductory form. So give me three goals that you want to accomplish out of your martial arts practice. I'm asking mom, I'm asking Johnny, uh, you know, I'm asking both of them because I know for him to or her to succeed in the martial arts, or especially in my program, that I've got to start you day one with the goal. I want to put that white uniform on you. And in initial, in some cases, I'll take my black belt off and I'll tie around them so that mom, I said, mom, take a picture of this. Because I'm trying to instill in their mind longevity. I'm trying to instill in their mind that this is about the growth mindset of you're starting where now as a white belt, but one day you're going to be finishing over here 
as a black belt. So I'm trying to let mom see, look into the future and support little Johnny or little Susie towards that goal of one day, the picture that she's just taken that now I tell him, said, Mom, now go home, you know, you know, get this printed out, put it in a frame, put it in his room, some place that both of you guys can see that one day, by his persistence and your support, that he's going to be a black belt. So, you know, that's just one of the ways that, you know, we think about goal setting, we think about mindset and what it actually oh, and what it actually is. So, you know, so how do you, how, you know, a new student comes in or if you're teaching a uh, business seminar, uh, you're doing corporate, you know, how do you motivate people or get them to connect or bring that light bulb to go off to talk about, you know, the thing that's keeping them back, you know, in making a cut? You know, most people think that you put a straw mat up, you pull out a sharp sword, and you just cut through it. But in the essence, it really doesn't work all that. It doesn't work quite that way because there has to be, you know, a skill set that actually attaches to that. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. It's, it's, it's that way. But moreover, a lot of times when we have our growth mindset and we've worked at it a few different ways, there are a few things that we have to consider. If I have a great new growth mindset and I have this new idea, you know, a great idea about becoming something, accomplishing thing, usually people in our society, especially our relatives, are called dream stealers. They'll take our great idea, our new goal, and they'll poo-poo it away a little bit. So a lot of times when you have a new mindset that you're working on to develop yourself and better yourself, you have to be a little stronger just because there are going to be an opposite force sort of saying, nah, nah, stay the same way you are. Don't become anything. Don't, don't put your head outside the shell. And that's what happens a fair amount. And we have to take that in consideration. With the growth mindset, we have to really, really think um, how we can work in this new modern global society when we're indoctrinated with lots of different things. Now, of course, in the martial arts, we have our mindset on, I want to be a yellow belt, you'll be a yellow belt. When you're a yellow belt, everybody will know your mindset on what you have done or what you want to become. But in the corporate world, they think almost the same. For example, when I lived in Tokyo, I had a really nice bird's eye view on how Japanese salarymen or business people also lived and worked. You know, living in a different country, you see things a lot different. And uh, these, these mindsets, they, they look at them and you, you start seeing that they have ingrained into the Japanese samurai way of life for centuries, even though these same mindsets are set de deeply into the cultural and in the workplace. Now, a mindset, this is how they think. You must live your job or career intensely, wholeheartedly, without reserve, as, you might, as if you might die tomorrow or worse, even be fired in the next instant. And lacking this sort of commitment, your mindset guides you to the coffee room or the coffee cooler. And that's where a lot of people hang out. So even though we have a semi-strong mindset, we must make sure our goals are we have the right michi or the right path to that. And a lot of people are going to try to trip you on the way. So as far as mindsets go and building a school or building to the next level or building to a new belt rank, you have to remember that it's mostly on your head because your mindset is different than anybody else's unless you can effectively explain it to some people or lots of people where they understand your thought process and they start meshing theirs with yours. And then you have a, a very, very strong group. Especially well, you know, that's important. Yes, go ahead. Well, you know, that's really, you know, one key thing that you said a few moments ago, Sometimes, in many cases, you start off on a journey, and you have a great idea. Then you, uh, you now you share it with too many people, and these people, based upon what they think and feel, they may be accustomed to being at this place. And therefore, what you consider is a major idea or something that's good, they may reject it, and it's because, in many cases, 
they don't understand it. Uh, number two is they don't see your vision. And then we're going to talk about vision in a moment. And that's where I was talking about, you know, going back to cutting. And we would sort of bring an analogy back into the martial arts. It's because your vision is within you. And when you have these thoughts, you have also the emotional side that connects with thought. And when, these, the, when the emotional side connects with thought, it in, and then it creates the image in your head. And in your head, you begin to see it as is the reality and what could be the outcome. This is why having writing things down of keeping a journal you know, sometimes someone says, I don't want to keep a journal. Keeping a journal helps you to be able to, you know, I, I sit at my desk and I'm writing and I keep a, a continual journal. So every time I do something, I actually write it down. So as I'm writing down a step, so because I'm holding so many thoughts in my head that I can go back and I remember what I was doing and how that thought connected to that. You know, I use mind maps and all kinds of things to help me be able to hold the creative thoughts that I'm having. But that's what my mindset is, is that I'm a creative person. I'm blessed to be a creative person. And, you know, create, creation is great as long as you can actually see it through. And we are all creators. But what we have to realize with that you know, uh, 70,000 thoughts that we have a day, if we don't learn to control them, they go random. And if you're not in control, someone else is in control. That someone else can be an outside source or that something your conscious mind and your subconscious mind can be in battle with that. You know, a great analogy, I think, of, of having that vision in the martial arts, and these are things that the martial arts they're there to teach you, but if you don't have a teacher that understands the concept, you still don't learn the lesson. And I think in kata, in forms are is a great personal development tool because it it sharpens your ability to be able to visualize and use your imagination because in mindset you have to have a balance of a working system. So visualization, uh, you know, your inner conscious mind, your conscious thoughts, these are things that go into creating success. So when we're thinking about if we're doing kata, we're doing forms, and we're practicing the movement, it is not the movement, but it is the practice of the technique and the visualization and the imagination of what's actually going on in the technique. If you were doing a low block or if you were doing a high block, it is not the block. But what is the outcome from the block and what is it, what is it in your mind that you see that actually happened? When you made the block, did you stop the kick or did you injure the leg or did you injure the attacker's arm? What is the outcome that you want to do? You know, great masters want to develop their techniques, that they're superior techniques that you only have to do one, that you learn the principles of extension of your key and energy. Well, the extension of key and energy is the same thing that you need to manifest your goals and the things that you need to do. So if you're working, if you're a practice of a martial artist and you're working and going through your forms and techniques and and, and Shion Abbott, you said a few moments ago, you know, you have to you have to commit yourself to whatever that you're doing for the outcome. If you do not commit yourself, then the outcome is going to slow down and pretty soon you lose the momentum, you lose the drive to be able to make that happen, to manifest that. So when you think about uh, uh, where you want to be, versus where you used to be, you have to be able to have a comparison. And intuition is that ability to compare your past, to look at your present, and determine what your future is. So when we think of that, you know, that's one of the ways that we want to think about this growth mindset is to move forward 
and to make things happen. And you can do that do that by the practice of listening to motivational things every day. Read a book. Watch a motivational uh, you know, YouTube video. Anything that you can do to build the the inspiration inside of you. You may have doubt, but if you're listening to a, a motivational speaker like Les Brown, who tells about all the things he failed at as a child, but he tells now once he understood and, and developed the confidence and learned about the commitment, how he changed his life from being a person that uh, people used to laugh at and said he wasn't educatable, you know, to a person now that, you know, millions stand in front of just to hear him tell his story and how he grew from that. So I think, you know, that's one of the areas to be able to do. So, you know, she, so what are some other things or areas, especially, and I think in the past few weeks I've come across people that really are ready to grow, uh, but in some cases they don't know how, uh, or they don't know what, or don't know where to start. So what are some things that, you know, that you would say that people can do to become inspired to take action? Well, we're old school. So old school has its own parameters, and we already went through all that. But for the newer people that have these good thoughts and uh, mindsets, the main problem is, is who do they go to? Who do they talk to? Most of them don't know how to commit. They want to commit, but they don't know the right way to do it. And reading a book or listening to a song gets them motivated until the book is over or the song's over. So we have to work with them, not individually, but in groups or together, where they can see us show them our experience so they don't spin their wheels or waste their money trying to go off on different tangents. So what I would probably suggest is in martial arts or in business too, if you don't know how to commit, then you must learn how to commit. And that's where our expertise comes in. We show people how to commit at a much smoother way or level. Well, you know, getting a coach, you know, and that's, and that's sort of what we do. And this is why we are approaching this from the way that we're approaching it from is that we are teachers. We are motivational coaches. We have a lot of experience at doing that and in motivating people to be able to take action. So the very first thing, and coaching is a very powerful tool. Uh, we have business coaches. I have a business coach, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I started when I started bowling, you know, back thirty some years ago. You know, I started off. I didn't, you know, when I wanted to learn bowling, and I'd been to a uh, never been bowling before, and I went to a bowling center and bowled with some folks, and they just made a big joke out of me because I couldn't bowl. I didn't go back and just buy some books and try to figure it out. I went back and I hired a bowling coach to teach me about bowling. And I bowled 50 games every week for probably three years. At the end of it, I'd won 40 you know, amateur titles before I turned pro on the PBA tour. My success was that I had a great coach. When I opened up my martial arts school, I did not have a martial arts teacher only, but my teacher who was selling franchises was a coach and directed me through all the pitfalls, which allowed me to be able to achieve a, a some amazing success that I'm so grateful for, uh, but because I didn't have to go out and hunt the information, there was someone like that. And I'm telling you know people now, one of my favorite phrases, if you want to know the quality of your life, Check your five closest friends because that's important. You will gravitate and you will do according to the environment that you're in. If you change the environment, you can now begin to change the person. If you have, you know, and I look around in so many cases for even martial arts schools that are still of the belief that, you know, that, you know, they should share their art with only one or two students. 
Well, that's okay, but the whole world needs to be changed, and we need that positive support for people coming up in the world. Now, if you have a positive message along with your martial arts, because if you just have your martial arts and that's all you have is the ability to kick, punch, and fight, then you don't have anything. Martial arts is built more than just kick and punch. Martial arts is a uh, uh, it is a technique. It is a it is life changing. You know, in that, would you agree, sir? Oh, mindsets, mindsets. You know, we're looking at martial arts from say twenty years ago today. The the thought process is completely different. Now you don't need to wear a belt, or you just you know you can be any weight, you can be anything you want, you can be gruff, you can be crude, rude, and unattractive, and be a superhero now, like in the in some of the arts. Whereas a long time ago, you had to wear a suit and tie and you had to be an upstanding member of your community because they, you couldn't be a teacher if you weren't. So I've seen a lot, a lot of changes that way, and that's because a lot of these new people have mindsets that uh, haven't been polished, if I could say that. And uh, that's how it is. Now, how I can see everything immediately is I've been doing martial arts for over 40 years, and uh, I'm like a profiler. I can see a mile away someone walking. What are their injuries? How they walk? What are their limps? What are their good parts or bad parts? And the way they talk just a little bit. After 30 seconds, we know their mindset on how they're thinking about everything. And a lot of times, their mind and body doesn't mesh. And this is of great importance because if you have everything running smooth like a watch, then everything does. Well, this is great. And, you know, what we're looking for, we're actually looking for, uh, as teachers at our level, we're looking for martial artists or we're looking for individuals that want to make changes. We want to, you know, develop a group of people that are looking to succeed and helping them not only on knowledge about success, but also the internal knowledge of success because everything has to actually be there. And uh, sir, I know you have you have created a quite a few products and books. Uh, you know, I, I was trying to look online. You've already created a great number of books uh, on the martial arts. So, how do people get to uh, you know, know know about your books, uh, your uh, um, website with the sword training how did i get to all this well as far as the books and all the media that i've done it's just basically you go over to learn the sword.com it's easy to spell no japanese words in there like samurai or anything like that and go to a simple site like that learn the sword.com for basic martial arts up to advanced martial arts and you can see all the ins and outs there and all the books and, of course, my business side of the website, it's called DanaAbbott.com, where we work with more of the corporate people or business people. Because even though businessmen are businessmen and martial artists are martial artists, some of the greatest businessmen in Japan are martial artists because they must. Because at a younger age, if they didn't put their mind and body together, they wouldn't have that confidence to take them up the corporate ladder to be CEOs of all these major companies who I met back in the 80s. And I can honestly say that either business or in pleasure, like martial arts, these people were the top, like top kendo players. What do top kendo players do besides becoming cops or becoming military or fire department, first responders? Actually, a lot of them become CEOs because they know how to run a ship well because their mindsets are strong and thoroughly thought out. You know, and that's really key. And everyone, if you want to learn more about what I'm doing in the corporate coaching, or if you are interested in getting involved in corporate coaching, then we'd love to uh, share with you, you know, some tips that will help you. I know I'm in uh, New Jersey coming up in November. We're talking with another major corporation in Atlanta, you know, so I generally travel all over the country uh, in my karate uniform. So my classes that I'm doing in the corporate sector is actually in my karate uniform. I come in, uh, one of the programs that I teach is called Breaking Through Barriers. 
and that program, I come in as a martial arts black belt, the grand master, to have that sense of power or empowerment. Because when you see black belt, it gives you a, a sense of strength. And that's sort of, it's all about your image. And we'd love to share with you uh, tips and information of what you need to do if you would like to enter the corporate sector and now become a corporate educator. You know, and that's what we're called. We're called corporate educators. So, you know, it's all about a language. It's all about the type of information that the corporate world that they want, uh, how do they want it presented, uh, you know, your flexibility, you as that person. So there's a lot of things that actually go with that. So everyone, uh, you can give me a call if you need, if you have questions. The area code is 919-618-8075. Shea uh I'm not sure I got your telephone number. Is there a number that folks, if they want to uh, talk with you, they can call? Well, sure it is, 480 480- Five seven five seven three one nine. It's four eight zero five seven five seven three one nine. And like myself, as yourself, we are corporate educators, and that means that we teach through hands-on application because we can tell people about everything. But if we take them down and show them from A to Z and have them actually work out with us in real time, either in martial arts or in corporate. Um, it's amazing how fast everybody understands and becomes on the same page. And that's the real importance. In the global society now where everything done is done in nanoseconds, mindsets have to be done polished and ready to go sooner than later because if you wait, things will just pass you by, especially in lightning speed that they have today. I right, agree. So, everyone, so, you know, check out what we're doing. We are looking for people that are looking to ex, uh, exceed uh, in life and grow their martial arts or empower themselves or get into the corporate sector. So we're going to be giving you more information on that. This is Grandmaster Jesse Bowen uh, signing off and saying have a blessed week.